Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. The jury is still out on whether or not I have a cold or just really bad allergies. It is Georgia in the spring, so either one could be true. Uh, if I sound a little weird, that's why, but basically today we're just gonna jump right back into Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time, you probably know as the ABC family show that ran through like, I don't know, 2010 to 2016 or 17. Really big Disney show. Pulling it up on Disney Plus as we speak, not sponsored. But the last time we covered the pilot and I said I wanted to just keep covering episodes, so here we are. Welcome to episode two. Episode two is called something dramatic. What's it called? The Thing You Love Most, episode two. All right, let me get my notepads out. We're gonna keep having to family tree this shit. If you don't know, I've been going from the beginning and family treeing all of them. I'm already going to need a second page. I just know it. But let's just jump into it. Oh, I sound like Cher, and it sounds so much better on Cher. We're putting this on 2x speed. One, because I have ADHD, but also because I have less than an hour to get to my own live stream. So let's hope that I'm not late, like I usually am. We start off with Henry watching the clock that never moves, moving to signify that the curse is ending. And then we get a little mini montage of all the citizens of Storybrooke just kind of waking up and going about their morning routines, including Emma, who is new to town because she's the big savior who's gonna break the curse, but she doesn't know that yet. Regina the Evil Queen is flipping through the storybook that has basically all of their life stories in it. The missing pages, where are they? She realizes that the last few pages are missing. I just noticed that he ripped out the last pages because the last pages were Emma coming to town. I guess that's not, not wrong, but I don't know. When I recreate the book, I might add in some stories that I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. She's like, shit, the clock! It's not supposed to move. Time's supposed to be frozen. Why is time not frozen? I like how she glares at it. Like, if she intimidates it enough, it'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, and stop ticking. I guess those rusty old inners finally straighten themselves out, huh? Yes, how about that indeed? She knows it's because of Emma that the curse is starting to wear off, so she goes to her bed and breakfast room and gives her or tries to give her a basket of apples. You know the evil queen in apples, right? You shouldn't take apples from the evil queen. Kind of like how you shouldn't buy sushi from a gas station, but worse. Any problems he has are being taken care of. What does that mean? It means I have him in therapy. That's not a bad thing. I think that's supposed to be framed as a bad thing, but going to therapy is not a bad thing. You're a good parent if you're putting your kid in therapy. We now get a flashback to the very goofy wedding scene where she crashes their wedding from the last episode, the first episode. The previous episode is the first episode. And we now see that this story takes place chronologically directly before the pilot. You're gonna see that a lot, where it's like a big timeline and they kind of fill it in sporadically. Would you like something to drink? Do I look like I need a drink? She's not a happy, shiny person. She's hangry, at least, or something. How do you plan on accomplishing that? A dark curse? She goes and visits her friend Maleficent. Yes, that Maleficent. Yes, it was about the same age you were when that sleeping beauty got the best of you. Because she wants her sleeping curse, because they, yes, they did explain why they both use a sleeping curse. It is literally the same curse. So Maleficent and the Evil Queen, they're just kind of swapping recipes like besties do. I need my curse back. Oh, well, I guess Maleficent borrowed it first and now she's borrowing it back because somebody else created the curse. We'll get to that later. They have a magic fight. She threatens to kill the, I guess, unicorn. She saves her and in return for saving the unicorn, she, she loses the curse. If you're going to kill me, kill me. Why would I do that? You're my only friend. Friendship. Oh yeah. Speaking of, speaking of the unicorn and such, um, trigger warning for like, well, death is kind of going to be a constant throughout the show, but um, this one specifically has animal death, so just be aware of that. You don't see it, but it's brought up. You will leave an emptiness inside you, a void you will never be able to fill. She doesn't care. She's on her vigilante shit. I feel like the evil queen would be a Swifty, you know what I mean? Who among us is tired of losing? She's gathering all of her evil cohorts and lighting a fire and performing the ritual. I wonder why these specific people, like, did she just gather everybody with magical powers in the vicinity, like in the tri-state, tri-kingdom area? Is this a coven? Do they have a coven? That's fun. Prized heart from my childhood steed. 
Yeah, so she killed her childhood horse for the curse. And then it didn't even work. You really unleashed something there. <laughs> and then she turned that little guy to stone and now he's a garden gnome. We're all garden gnomes people that makes garden gnomes so dark. The mirror strikes again. This guy's name is Sidney Glass in Once Upon a Time. Well, in Storybrook, his name is Sidney Glass. Uh, he is the magic mirror, if you didn't pick up on that from the last little flashback. She spent a lot of time in foster homes. Uh, she, she got into some trouble when she was a kid. I think it's funny that the magic mirror brought into the real world is like a gossip columnist. Ah, so you decided to stay. It's good news for our tourist business. It's bad for our local signage. It's a, it's a joke. She's like, it's not a funny uh, funny joke. Also, this is not Jamie Dornan's fault at all. I don't actually know anything about Jamie Dornan as a person, but recently on live, Gabe and I have been reading through this Celebrity Encounters Starring You book, and there was an Imagine about Jamie Dornan, and it was very creepy, and I was concerned. It was more the Jamie Dornan one. I'm yeah. just gonna be like, I'm gonna hear a bump in the night, I'm gonna be on Jamie's breaking into my uh, house. Jamie, huh, Jamie, get out of here. We don't want you here. Jamie, I divorced your ass five years ago. Get out of my house. <laughs> Hey, where'd you get that? Don't eat that? She took the apples? Don't eat that. The kid just yoinks it. And then yeets it. He did a little yoink and yeet. I took out the end. The part with you in it. He's telling her about the plan he's hatching. I knew you'd believe me. I never said I did. Why else would you be here? Oh, that's so cute and sad. Just to recap, this is Henry, uh, Emma's son that she's reconnecting with. Who does he think you are? Snow White. Oh, Mom! Who does he think you are? Not in the book. She clearly believes a little bit more than she wants to let on because if Mary Margaret was Snow White, that would make her her mother and she just had a reaction to that. <laughs> yes, I know they're the same age. No, it's not confusing. She goes and visits Archie, the therapist. I mean, he thinks everyone is a character in his book. That's crazy. I hope you don't talk that way in front of him. I love those glasses, Archie. Keep doing you. I love his style. The wallpaper in his office is like, the top runners are like trees in a forest. I wonder if that's, pro it's probably intentional. Why don't you take a look at the file? Uh, like there's a little mushroom thing in there. It's very like woodsy in there. And then the pinstripe wallpaper just kind of reminds me of Peter Pan. So I feel like this is all intentional on the set decorator's part. There are like a lot of little Easter eggs in this show like that. You were right. She was just here. Did she take the file? That afternoon, the sheriff, Graham, he shows up because he got a report that she had stolen files from the therapist. The files that he gave her willingly, meaning that it was a trap, she fell for it, and then he called her in. I'm afraid, Miss Swan, you're under arrest. That's low, Archie. And here I was giving you the olive branch as the only Jiminy Cricket I didn't hate. Things will be better. I gotta get back to class. Henry's not buying the shit. You know the shrink is lying, right? Such an informal taking of mugshots. I've never had my mugshot taken. Tell me if it's that laid back, where they're just like, eh, please look to the side. To the right, please? No, the other side. You were gathering intel, Operation Cobra. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost. It's need to know, Sheriff. It's need to know, Sheriff, and since we don't trust cops in these parts, you're not in the know. Miss Blanchard's gonna bail her out. You are? I, uh, trust you. She's got trees all in her wallpaper, too. Oh, and speaking of trees... What the hell are you doing? Picking apples. Emma just straight up goes out and chops down her prized, uh, apple tree, or part of it. Your move. That's hard as hell, Emma. Probably not the smartest thing to do, but pretty metal. Maybe it's for the best. If you're confused as to who this guy is, you should be. They don't tell you yet. It's just us, dearie. You can show yourself. Oh, and then she goes and visits Rumpelstiltskin, my boy. We already know I'm a Rumpelstiltskin apologist. So, so worried. He's just easily the most interesting character. Like Snow and her lovely new husband. Apparently, Robert Carlyle based the voice of Rumpelstiltskin off of his young son who would run around the house doing like voices like little kids do. I think that's really cute. Should I ever come to you for any reason, you must heed my every request. All right, he's going to help her cast the curse if she agrees to do whatever he says in the new world if he says please. Now, once the curse is enacted, he won't remember who he is, and he knows that, so... So long as I say... 
please. Remember what I said about he probably figured out who he was and remembered when he saw Emma at the end of the pilot episode? Keep that in mind. You need to sacrifice a heart. I sacrifice my prized steed. A horse? He's like, what the hell do you think this is? The saddle club? You gotta do better than that. Tell me what will suffice. The heart of the thing you love most. She's got a... She's got to sacrifice the heart of the thing she loves most. What I love most died because of Snow White. She says, the thing I love most died because of Snow White. We get a little bit of drama. Then please stop wasting everyone's time and just do it. He's like, just put me out of my misery. I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. Jeopardy's on. They probably don't get Jeopardy in the jail cells. I need to ask you to leave. No, Granny's kicking her out. I'm afraid we have a no felons rule. It it turns out it's a city ordinance. Let me guess, the mayor's office just called to remind you. Damn, so to straight up get even, she just called them and told them to kick her out of her bed and breakfast room? That's low. Also, it's clear in the in the pilot that they thought Granny's bed and breakfast was gonna be, like the bed and breakfast part of it, it was gonna be a much more central part of the show. I think we see it one more time after this and then it's just gone. But Granny's diner is pretty central. He's my son. It's what's best for him. I know that's what you believe. Okay, but if this escalates, it seems to me the only one who will get hurt is Henry. Graham is out here giving some solid parenting advice for someone who does not have children. Why don't you drive over to my office? Or walk, whatever suits you. And her car's booted. What's a little political corruption between friends? I'd like to start by apologizing for this one. What? She just straight up has her feet kicked up on her fancy furniture. That's pretty funny. I know I'm not a mother. I think that's pretty self-evident. But I did have him, and I can't help it. He got in my head, and I want to make sure he's okay. She basically says, like, look, I'm just here to keep an eye on Henry. Like, he is my kid. Poor kid can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality, and it's only getting worse. It's crazy. You think I'm crazy? She then uses the word crazy when referring to Henry's beliefs, not knowing that Henry was right there. Henry. But the evil queen Regina sure knew. You knew he would be here. Of course I did. I'm his mother. Ouch. You have no soul. How in the hell did you get like this? Kind of a long story. It's like six seasons worth of a story. Well, I guess all six seasons aren't about her, but it's quite a it's quite a bit of TV watching to get to the end of the story. What happened? Did you get your answer? A lot of the CGI does not hold up in this show, but this scene looks pretty okay to me. I think it's mostly because they're using harsh lighting. Like, I know that's a trick with, like, getting your CGI to look better is putting in a harsher lighting. It has to be less detailed. Daddy, I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, and this is her dad. Right. What Snow did to me, what she took from me. Couldn't you just tell us now what she took from you? Do we really have to watch for a bunch longer? I'm gonna watch a bunch longer. I do love this show. I put the evil queen way up here at the top, forgetting that we find out who her dad is in the second episode me alive, Daddy. Her very existence mocks me. He's the thing she loves most now that uh, Snow White has murdered whoever else it was that she loved. We'll get to that later on. So basically it's his heart that would need to be cut out. So basically he's like, hey, don't kill me, daughter. Maybe, maybe don't do that. Maybe do something else. Please. You don't have to do this. I have to do something. All right, so I have the Evil Queen's dad. I kind of put it on this up here. Oh, and look at that, she pulled out his heart. That's rough. Kids these days. You know, send this to your to your boomer Gen X parent that's like, you know, I see those things on TikTok where people are like, my parents were abusive and now they don't know why I won't talk to them. Just send them this. <laughs> I feel like it could be worse. I'm just kidding, it's horrible. Or maybe not, I don't know what your parents did. I'm sorry. There we go. The family tree has grown a little bit. Is it an apple tree? It's probably an apple tree. Just wanted to say thank you and, um, Pay you back the bail money. She goes and visits her new friend slash mother, Mary Margaret slash Snow White. I'm here to be your guide. It's okay. I'll keep it all as straight as I possibly can for you guys. Cinnamon? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have asked. The casting is pretty good on this show. They have the same, like, facial structure. Are you sure you don't want to talk about it? Meanwhile, poor Henry is having an existential crisis, and he's only 10. He should have at least a few more years before his first one of those. You think I'm crazy? No, I think the curse is crazy. And it is. 
So Emma basically goes in and to save face with Henry is like, look, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I'm just saying it would be kind of easy to believe why someone couldn't believe you. But there are a lot of crazy things in this world. So what do I know? If the curse is real, the only way to break it is by tricking the evil queen into thinking that we are non-believers. I mean, all gaslighting of a child aside, this is pretty true. You wouldn't want to just go walking around being like, Hey, evil queen, I know you're the evil queen. They burned the pages! Don't burn the pages! It's a one-of-a-kind book! I hate- books are a passion of mine. <laughs> and, oh, look at that. She threw her dad's heart in a fire. That sounds charming. Not like charming the character. I know that could be confusing more than it already was. Not very pleasant. I love you, Daddy. Oh, and her dad's name was also Henry. So Henry is named after his dead great-great-grandfather who was killed by his great-grandmother who is also his adoptive stepmother. Who would ever say that this family tree is complicated? That night, she's uh, cleaned up the apple tree. She's fixed it up, salvaged it, made sure the rest of it is healthy. And who comes to visit her but Mr. Gold, AKA Rumpelstiltskin. You know, cause Rumpelstiltskin Gold, you get it. I'm not in the business of making deals with you anymore. All right, yeah. The boy I procured for you. Oh, and he secured the adoption for Henry. We're gonna learn more about that later, too. I forgot about that little tidbit. Do you know something? I have no idea what you're implying. I think you do. She's also trying to figure out how much he remembers from the old world. From the old country. I'm not gonna answer you, dear. So I suggest you excuse me. Please. So get the fuck out of my way. Oh, he said please! So she knows! She knows that he knows that she knows that he knows! I think. He remembers who he is, and she knows it now. So now we have two characters that remember who they are. The drama. So that's where episode two leaves off. Our family tree didn't grow much in this one, but it grew. And I have to go do a live stream. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around. I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber who say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye. Oh my god, I, I am too wheezy to, to be doing that outro that fast.